and gentlemen, will you please put your hands together for Harry Hill and the Royal Family of Hill. Welcome to my world. Leave your kids behind. Welcome to my world. I've built on your behind. <laughs> Thank you, and welcome to my fruit corner. And what is so special about tonight's show, Brother Alan? Tonight's show comes to you with added bird song. Mm. <laughs> Added bird song indeed, and I'm hoping there'll be a little starling in there. Starlings, my darlings. Lapwing. Lapwing, a ding ding. And the turn. A star turn, Harry. <laughs> <laughs> I should point out that Alan is the person who paints the pink colour onto crab sticks. <laughs> <laughs> That's our Alan. And without further ado, we go over to the Cliff Ranger singers in their singing booth to ask what our theme is this week. Police and Police and thieves, and we'll be meeting some of the various, <laughs> ooh, the various crooks that run around the country creating havoc, and we'll be meeting some thieves as well. <laughs> what a show we've got for you tonight, with the help of Mum. Hello. Dad. Hello. And he's here. Yes, he's here. He's half boy, half oyster. The, <laughs> the tiny three-year-old imp boy, Alan Hill. Four years old, adopted at birth, we think his real mother was a waitress um, because he was found in a basket on a lovely bed of French fried potatoes. <laughs> Just to keep him warm, Alan, of course, only able to communicate via the tapping method. Tip, tip, tip. That's one tap for yes. Tip, tip, tip. Two taps for no. Tip, tip, tip. And the theme from how to express relief. week that uh, actually heard this week that Alan is trying to trace his real parents uh, well to be honest I'm trying to trace his real parents because I'm absolutely sick of him I really am is that physically sick Harry yes Alan it is well <laughs> as, you, as you know every year the annual woodland song contest is held where all the woodland folk compete with entirely original songs to come up with a song that represents the woodland best and here on fruit corner we're very privileged to have been chosen to host the 13th annual Woodland Song Contest. And Mum and Dad, Hill, you've been largely responsible for us landing that deal. That's right, Harry. I put in a bid to host the 1994 Olympics. You didn't tell me you put in a bid for the Olympics, Janet. I can't tell you everything, Tony. <laughs> I put in bids to host the Olympics, the Channel Tunnel, the Second World War and the Woodland Song Contest and we came up trumps with the song contest, Harry. Just out of interest, Mum, where exactly had you planned to put up the Olympic athletes had you won the Olympic bid? A series of sofa beds, Harry. <laughs> sofa beds are very reasonably priced at the moment and can be used for sitting down during the day and sleeping at night. <laughs> Brilliant business mind of Janet Hill at work. There. You know, I was in McDonald's uh, today and I looked up and there was a woman breastfeeding. That's what I call service. <laughs> now they get an extra gold star for that, you see. Now, <laughs> Alan, are you trap profiling this week? Yes, Harry, I am. This week, Harry, I am profiling the sun trap. Really? Many people have a son who is perhaps a little wayward or just plain and... <laughs> Or just plain annoying, or maybe he's only able to communicate by, say, tapping. Um, <laughs> just, just a minute, um, uh, Alan, uh, come here. Look, Alan, this, this sun trap, surely, Alan, surely a sun trap is an area of land that is blessed with more than its fair share of sun, that's sun, S-U-N, rather than sun, S-O-N, a small male offspring. Are you fed up with a boy or not? <laughs> Wait there. Mum? Would you just take little Alan into the special pressurised soundproof booth? Come on, you! Yes, yeah, see you a little later on, Alan. <laughs> He's in, Harry. Right, the sun trap. First of all, you hoist a musical instrument. A musical instrument? Yeah, a grand piano for a large boy or something like a piccolo for the smaller child. <laughs> I see, I you, see. You hoist the grand piano mm. on a pulley system high mm. into the rafters, like so. Come on, come on, Dad, put your back into it. Come on. Ah. 
I see. Oh. They're, they're, just, they're just standard rafters there, are they, Alan? Yes, standard EEC rafters, Harry. Now, attach the other end of the rope to this peg, driven firmly into the ground, directly underneath the musical instrument. Then you place your bait. And what would your bait be, O gleeful trapper? Something tailor-made to attract the boy. Yes. Something that the boy might have something in common with. Yes. Something that the boy might be able to easily communicate with. You mean? A woodpecker, Harry. Brilliant. <laughs> That's it, little fella. Yes, now, you see, I entice the woodpecker into place with a little cup of strongbow cider, Harry. They like that, you know. Mmm, mmm, I know, they love it, they love it. I'll put a biscuit in there now. And the trap is set! Now, stand back and wait for your son to be trapped. Mum, would you release little Alan from the high-pressure, sound-free booth? Yes, Harry. Here he comes. Mum's the word now. Right. Okay. Now, he's seen the woodpecker. He's coming up, he's going towards it. He's... Uh, oh, no! He's moving away! Oh, shame. Well, well, look, Alan, leave the trap set, then if he goes for it later on, all well and good. And that's the sound that tells us it's time for our first police or thieve. Tony Dad Hill, what'll it be? I detect DC Simon Cox, a policeman who likes to eat ants. <laughs> DC Cox, welcome. Hello, hello, hello. <laughs> now, just for the listeners, just for the listeners at home, what exactly yes. does DC stand for? District of Columbia, Harry. <laughs> really? Just made a little joke there. <laughs> you have to have a laugh in this job, Harry. It's the only thing that keeps you going, apart from great big helpings of my favourite ants. Um, Alan. <laughs> Just a minute, uh, just a minute, DC Cox. Alan, uh, this, this guest that you've got, this ant-eating copper, now, uh, <laughs> it may be me here, but he doesn't seem to be quite up to that usual high standard. Yes, I, I, I'm sorry, Harry, but we had to go through a different supplier this week. A different supplier? Yeah, usually we go through just guests on the Fulham Road, but they're close refurbishment, so we had to go through guests and things, you know, in Kilburn. <laughs> and we've never used them before. Would you like me to leave? No, no, you're, you're here now, you may as well get on with it. Well, I, I don't feel very wanted now, Harry. Oh, for pity's sake, man. Pull yourself together. Well, I like a pair of curtains. <laughs> He's doing it again, Alan. <laughs> I'm sorry, Harry, I'm sorry. <laughs> so then, yes. why do you eat ants? Well, Harry boy, you see, hey, I'm a diabetic, you see. And as you know, diabetics like to eat sugar, but aren't allowed to. Yes. And ants love all sweet things, Harry, and actively seek out sugar. Yes. So I thought by eating ants, they might lay in the stomach and eat any stray sugar that might be passing. Get him off. <laughs> Go on, clear off any ants. Go on. <laughs> Get off. I'm really sorry about that, Harry. You will be, Alan. You will be. Here, Harry. Wouldn't it be lovely to have a French girlfriend, eh? <laughs> French girlfriend, eh? Think about that. Ooh la la. French Don't girl. try and get on my good side. <laughs> sorry, Harry. <laughs> I'd recognise the sound of that buggy anywhere. Ladies and gentlemen, it's 82-year-old Nana Hill. You may be interested to know that this week, Nana is test-driving the Armstrong Sidley electric car. <laughs> Points out of ten, Nan, for the Armstrong Sidley. Four? Four? Five. Five. Well, very well done. Is it the, uh, Five, Armstrong? I think, Harry, because it is electric, as you know, and I care very deeply about the environment. Electric car, which means cheap to run, even if the extension need there is perhaps a little bit limiting. Um, <laughs> Right, Nana, you're going once again to share with us some of your magic moments from your full 82 years on this earth, from 1911 through to 1993. Nana Hill, what have been your magic moments? The river of life has been long and broad, and I pray it never stops. But the occasion I hold dearest of all was uh, when I was in the audience for Top of the Pops. <laughs> I stood next to Peter Powell and the Slade were on, I'm sure. Then I fell over with a dizzy turn and narrowly missed Midjewer. <laughs> Nana's magic moments there. What a full and active life she has seen. <laughs> Mum, who's first? <laughs> Who's first on the stump for the Woodland Song Contest? Representing the middle part of the woodland is 11-year-old Paul Bunn, a singing squirrel. 
Paul is 11, likes nuts, and is shortly to sign a deal with Tree Records. <laughs> <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, Your Majesty Paul Bunn with You Got Me in a Hazelnut World. Got me in a hazelnut world. <laughs> you got me thinking you're my girl. They say when the nut fits, you gotta wear it. And my nuts tell me you wanna share a bit. You got me in a hazelnut world. Ah! Oh, gotcha! Nana, you shot Paul Bun. <laughs> was a rat on the stump, Harry. It wasn't a rat, it was Paul Bunn, the squirrel singer. The squirrel is a member of the rodent family, Harry, and therefore is vermin. Technically, she's right, Harry. Oh, well, fair enough. Well done, then. <laughs> <laughs> Time for another policeman or thieving Tom. We have now great Her Majesty's pleasure in welcoming thieving Jim Potter. Oh, yes. <laughs> Welcome. Well, it's a pleasure to be here, Harry. You've got an unusual hobby that you picked up in prison. Yes, Harry, I paint crab sticks. <laughs> you paint the crab... I thought you painted the crab sticks, Alan. I'm sorry, Harry, it was just a childish boche of mine. A boche? I, I, I'll say that. <laughs> now, Jim, carry on. Thank you, thank you. I got bored with playing old pink, mm -hmm. so I took it a stage further, you see. I started to experiment. Ooh. To each crab stick, I took me oil paints, and I painted all the old masters. And my canvas was crab meat. And, you, <laughs> and you've got some, some of them here, haven't you? Oh, look, that's, that really is... Oh, uh, Michelangelo's Madonna with Child. Mm -hmm. Ooh, Constable's the Hay Wayne. Oh, lovely. A study in turquoise here. Oh, Van Eyck. No, David Eyck, that one. Jolly good. <laughs> <laughs> Remar remarkable, the way you've worked in the different textures there. You got a little bit more for your decorated crab sticks, do you, than just for the plain old pink ones? No, Harry, no, no. Actually, I get less for them. Oh. A couple of reasons, really. They do tend to taste a bit of oil paint, you see. Mm. And also, each stick takes about a month to paint, so they're quite poisonous. <laughs> uh, thanks to Jim Potter there, who... Uh, Jim, uh, can I have my wallet back, please? Oh, thanks. <laughs> you were in prison once, weren't, weren't you, Dad? Yes, yes, I was arrested whilst driving a brown P registration maxi. And the offence? That was the offence. <laughs> There he goes. There he goes. Go on, Alan. Go on. He's approaching the trap, but... No, he's not biting. He's not biting. We'll leave it up. A bit more luck later on. Well, um, we get a lot of letters on the show, don't we, Alan? Yes, Harry, we do. <laughs> Gets all the best lines. I've had... I've had a letter from regular listener Bunty Hoven, who writes, Dear Harry, can I have a signed photograph of you paying me £500 in cash? <laughs> I would greatly appreciate this, as I am a really big fan of money. And that photograph is in the post to you, Bunty. Well, we've had... Here's an interesting item, isn't it, Alan? This one. Yes. We've had evidence sent to us here at the Fruit Corner that controversial singing-songwriting duo Simon and Garfunkel never actually got on. And in fact, no, they didn't. And we've, we've got evidence that Paul Simon used to beat up Art Garfunkel. <laughs> When he didn't get it right. What's the story on this one, Alan? Well, Harry, if we listen closely enough to their hit song, The Sound of Silence, we can actually hear Simon hitting Art Garfunkel. <laughs> Hello, darkness, my old friend. Oh! <laughs> I also suspect that if Art made a slight error in singing, Paul Simon would grab the front of his hair and pull him forward, going, Can't you read? <laughs> how the front of Art's hair has become worn down, whilst the rest of it remains very bushy. It is very bushy. This, very bushy, isn't it? It is very, very bushy. This later forced the bushy Garfunkel to duck out of the music business and go on to run the very successful restaurant chain, Aberdeen Steakhouse. <laughs> what a fascinating behind-the-scenes glimpse at two celebrities that don't get on. Well, time once again for our Probably Not spot. Probably Not. Tony 
Tony Hill. We have a letter from a Mrs. Ricky Starkey who says, could the Labour MP for Brent East, Ken Livingstone, be an amphibian? I've noticed that during parliamentary question time, he often appears to be breathing through his skin and basking. <laughs> Far from being an ordinary human being, surely what we are seeing is a highly sophisticated newt. <laughs> well, Ken Livingstone, an amphibian, the answer to that must surely be... Probably not. But if you're listening, Ken, do give us a call. Dad, look, why are you dressed in women's clothing? <laughs> well, Harry, by dressing up as a woman, I have successfully avoided national service for the last 40 years. It was abolished in 1960. Eh? Hey? Now... <laughs> <laughs> I tell you what, dear, I tell you what, I got up this morning and uh, there was a spider in the bath. So I'm standing there, come on, hurry up, I've got to go to work, you know. <laughs> Oh, because it's bad luck to kill a spider, isn't it? But um, worse luck to kill a pedestrian, because <laughs> they've got the law stacked on their side, as I found out, <laughs> to my cost. Now, we've met a thief. We've met some of the nation's police force. But what about the victims? We go now to a victim with a very unusual story, as we welcome Martha Tidvale. Hello, Harry Back. I'm very nervous. All right, darling, now... <laughs> You were the victim of a very unusual attack. Tell us about that. Well, Harry, I was lying in my bed, see, and I hear these footsteps coming up the stairs. Oh, it would take below. All right, all right. Well, I'm a little Welsh dresser. Harry's... <laughs> Harry's here. Carry on now. Carry on. Footsteps up the stairs. And no... <gasps> uh, I can't go on. Harry, I can't go on. Harry, perhaps mm. if I take Marty into the pressurised grief canister, it... <laughs> It might help her get her composure back. Oh. All right, then, into the okay. pressurised... Oh. Time for the second contestant in our Song for the Woodland. <laughs> we welcome Megumi, an ant who represents the lower area of the woodland. The lower regions support many insects in various stages of development, from the lowly maggot, through the dormant pupae, to the beautiful newsreader Anna Ford. <laughs> But it is Megumi, an ant, who has been chosen to represent the lower region tonight. Now, Megumi, you're a red ant. Oh, I don't think we need to bring race into this, Harry. I'm a singer, Harry. It's simple as that. <laughs> Fair enough. And you're doing a song you've written yourself. It's entitled, The Best Part of Being an Ant is the Hatching, Brackets, But I Also Like to Nest, Close Brackets. <laughs> Lovely. <laughs> But I also like to nest I build up my nest from feces That I've made with my nephews and nieces <laughs> That's part of it <laughs> Oh, yum, yum, I love it <laughs> DC Cot, you mean Megumi Oh, sorry, was it important? I like the red ones, they're a bit sweeter. Alan Hill, kindly control your guests. Come on, you. I'll phone the agency to come and pick him up, Harry. You're in big trouble over this, Alan Hill. Okay. <laughs> it's time for police or thief. We give a statutory fine welcome to Ian and Robert Mills of the Metropolitan Police's exclusive Eunuch Squad. <laughs> Welcome, lads, welcome. Hello. Hello. <laughs> you're, hmm, that's ease, men. You're, you're unit coppers on the beat. That's right, Harry, yes, yes. We had the testicles removed. That's right, mm, isn't and it? And there's, there's a slightly different uniform you're wearing there. Yes, Harry, yes, yes. The trousers have a slightly shorter gusset, don't they? <laughs> yes, we, we don't need the luxury of the longer gusset, Longer Harry, gusset, no, no. Yeah, yes, that, that's ease, lads, that's ease. Now, I, I have a question. What is the advantage of being a unit copper? Eh? <laughs> Say again, Harry. Oh, I mean, why forfeit the testicles in this manner? What is the reasoning behind that? Do you know, I never really thought about it, Harry. <laughs> <laughs> now you've got me. You see, they asked for the testicles. Asked for them. Asked we handed them over, didn't we, Ian? Handed them over? Yeah, we did. Handed them over? Oh, we did. Wait a minute, but is it something to do with the pension scheme, Bob? <laughs> 
Bob and Ian Mills there, the unit coppers on the beat. <laughs> I'm feeling slightly better, Harry. All right, Martha. Martha Tidvale, of course. Right then, so we left you. You're in bed and a man coming up the stairs. I heard the footsteps and I looked up and there was a figure and... Oh, he said, right. give me your money. Oh, oh, all right, Marty. All right, oh, oh. Back, back in the booth, oh, Harry. Uh, put it up to level booth. eight, <laughs> Alan. <laughs> Very exciting story there. Well, this year sees the 66th anniversary of the anniversary of television. And it was in a tiny lab in Britain, Scotland, that... <laughs> A young Scottish scientist using only rudimentary Scottish equipment first, <laughs> first transmitted the very first episode of Kojak. And <laughs> I think we've got a tape of that now. I see Kojak. You're wanted by Mr. Crocker down at the precinct. <laughs> yeah, lollipop. Why can't I just get on with solving crime? Stavros, you have got a very bald head, Kojak. <laughs> Lollipop, who loves you, baby? If a picture paints a thousand words, why can't I paint you? You, you can't paint me, I you know. know. Lollipop. <laughs> <laughs> the very first ever episode of Kojak there. Mum, you've been very quiet there with your ice lolly. What have you been up to this week? Harry, I've been selling arms to the Contras. <laughs> Mum, I'm surprised at you. Not what you're thinking. Arms, Harry. Prosthetic limbs. Arms to people with no arms. <laughs> Thank heavens for that. So that then they're able to fire the guns and tanks I've been flogging them for years. <laughs> Look. Look for the gap in the market, Harry. Uh, Mum there with a fine head for business. I recognise the sound of that buggy anywhere. It's Nana Hill. Nana's here. Nana's here. Leave that boy alone, Nan. You'll do him harm. On second thoughts, go on, Nan. Go on, go on. Go on. Oh, sorry, sorry, Nan. Now, uh, Nana, what prey brings you to these territories, oh masterful one? Bigger me, Harry. Mm. <laughs> mm. Bigger me? Yes, Harry. This week I have been practising the ancient and scientific art of bigamy. But you're not married. <laughs> Grandad Hill died three years ago from asbestos poisoning. Four days it took to cremate him. <laughs> this week I married three different men. And how did you manage that? By muscling in on their weddings, <laughs> drugging the wives to be, and taking a plaster cast of their faces. I had these casts made into latex rubber masks. Not one of them noticed the difference until they got me back for the honeymoon. <laughs> I've been to Portugal, Book of Holland, Beirut. But why, Nan? Why? Why? For the reception, of course. I love Buffy food. <laughs> Nana Hill there. Feeling much better, Mr. Hill. You sure, Martha? You're still crying a bit, aren't you? I always cry, Harry. I can't help it. Even if I'm sleep standing up nowadays, I do it to reduce the blood flow to the eyes. <laughs> <laughs> Tell us your. Tell us your story. Well, the masked figure held a knife to my face. Oh, it was terrible. But I demanded money, but as he did so, the mask slipped down and I realised it was. It was. Yes? Me! Hey? <laughs> Yes, Harry? Is she from that same agency? <laughs> yes, Harry. Get her out. <laughs> and time for our third and final contestant in our song for the woodland. Tony. Well, Harry, it's the turn of the damper parts of the woodland, such as small ponds and rivers, which are well known for sticklebacks, water boatmen and pods containing alien beings which gestate in the water then escape rampaging around the country in search of human bodies to inhabit during their time on earth <laughs> uh, but it's three little newts we welcome now 
Individually, they are Joy, Teddy and Babs, but they appear for us now as the Beverly Sisters. Ladies, ladies, welcome. Hello, Harry. Hello, Harry. No, Nana, you are not a Beverly sister. <laughs> Mum, would you just... Come on, you. Sorry about that. Don't worry, Harry. Big, Big fans, fans, by the way. way. Now, come on, at ease. <laughs> <laughs> now then, who's who? I'm Teddy. My name's Joy. And I'm Babs. And together, we're, we're the, the Beverly sisters. sisters. And I'm Nana Beverly. Nana, <laughs> shut it. <laughs> Uh, you're right there, you three. You don't need a little rock pool or anything. Oh, no, oh, no, no Harry. Harry. We, we breathe through our skin and have primitive lungs. <laughs> <laughs> OK, well, I wonder... <laughs> I wonder whether you could, as a special favour for me, uh, just sing a little song. Can I join in? Nana wants to play her teeth, Harry. Oh, that would be nice, wouldn't it? <laughs> you sure you don't mind? Not at all. Jolly good. As they make their way over to the tree stump, ladies and gentlemen, <laughs> accompanied by 82-year-old Nana Hill... On the false teeth. <laughs> the Beverly Sisters. Sisters, sisters, there were never such devoted sisters. Never had to have a chaperone, no sir. I'm there to keep my eye on her. C -c -c Caring, sharing, every little thing that we are wearing. When a certain gentleman Wore the dress and I stayed home All kinds of weather we cling together The same in the rain and sun <laughs> What the... Nana Hill, you've trodden on the Beverly Sisters. I'm sorry, Harry, I didn't see them down there. Ladies and gentlemen, the Bevs! We do! Yes, indeed, and we now go back to Jan and Tony Hill for the scoring. Well, I'm sure you'll agree with me, Dad, when I say that the standard has been very high indeed. Yes, uh, we've had a couple of setbacks, Harry. One act eaten and one killed. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, so, to the scoring. The scores for Megumi. Deceased. Two points. <laughs> Duh. A low, score. <laughs> a low score there for Meg. Not much consolation for her husband and Anne Colony. For Paul Bunn. Also deceased. <laughs> One point. Oon point. A very low score for poor Paul Bunn. New album on its way. I must say it's looking very good for the Beverly's. The Beverly sisters. Partly squashed. <laughs> Seven points. Set points. Nana Hill. What's this? A late entry from Nana Hill? 18 points. What? Surely no one could have foreseen this result as Nana Hill, with her rhythmic percussive teeth, goes through to the final. And as the celebrations commence, that's all from us here at the Fruit Corner. Good night! <laughs> The entire show was thrown together by Harry Hill and starred Edna Dore, Al Murray, Sue Drouet, Phil Nice, Brenda Gilhooley, Matt Bradstock and Julian Duffy with special guests, the Beverly Sisters, with music by Cliff Ranger. The producer was Joe Magnuson. Come on, little woodpecker, it's time to go. Alan Hill, you're fired! 